Jacob Talbot spends a lot of time tracking down drug dealers. Drug and opioid abuse is out of control in the U.S. President Trump has declared a national public health emergency. Ohio is one of the state's worst hit. Talbot's hometown, East Liverpool, is one of Ohio's trouble spots. To put a face on the crisis, the town publicized this photo of a couple in their car, high on heroin, their grandson in the back seat. Now the community and the police have stepped up to fight against this epidemic. How old are you, honey? What's your birthday? No, no, okay. Give me a birthday on her. It's been raining in East Liverpool since early morning. I like to think that the weather doesn't keep them from not wanting their drugs, you know. If you get someone really bad, it don't matter if it's sun, rain, snow, they'll come out for it. Jacob Talbot grew up in this small town in Ohio. He knows every street and alleyway. Tony, it's on River Road heading towards downtown. Headquarters received a tip that a house in this area was being used as a drug house, one that dealers used to sell their products. Yeah, that one back there, we just got some tips on it that uh, we haven't got an exact time location as far as um, to narrow it down on what shift it might be running hot. But they, they called it in and said that that one's 17 to 83, you know we had 10-4, passing the old booth tire. Another patrol has pulled over a suspect. Talbot is called in as a backup. 8-3-10-7. You're under suspension, and we... We know that you're on their suspended license. You don't have nothing on you, nothing in the car. The police officers know the driver from previous drug offenses. His passenger has served prison time for drug dealing. Oh, the, the, the girl you went the other day arguing, you don't have nothing illegal? Talbot suspects the men were on their way to their supplier, but he has no proof. The pickup truck, at any rate, is clean. East Liverpool was once referred to as the pottery capital of the world. But the decline of the industry led to mass unemployment and eventually drug abuse. This used to be housing there. This one vacant. Don't believe anyone lives there. These are an older white car. Occupied but very run down. Older door POS. Jacob Talbot also considered moving away. If I moved away, there'd be no one here to to take care of our parents. It seems that mother siblings had left town. Uh, for other jobs and sisters married and moved where their husbands worked at and so I made the commitment to, to stay here and ride the storm out. And okay. A patrol unit has apprehended a woman. She's wanted for theft. I want to control substance under the control substance. If I had to guess it looks like crack cocaine. Is this your purse? Is this your wallet? Excuse me? Is this your wallet? This rolled up here? Yeah. Okay. It's obviously a crack pipe. If you have anything on you, just don't ditch it in the car because we, we, we check it at the beginning of every shift and there's nothing in here. So if we find something, 
So we'll deal with it, okay? Well, out on call, it's not unusual for Talbot to encounter former schoolmates and acquaintances who have become addicts. Oh, she actually did get it? To me, it's a little bit more disheartening when, when it's someone that you knew and, and grew up with, or if it be a family member, close friend, it's, it kind of hits home a little bit more than it is someone that you, you have uh, no idea about them or know anything about them. There. Back in East Liverpool's police station, Jacob Talbot and his fellow officers are hoping for reinforcements. Crack, heroin, fentanyl, entire regions are being inundated with drugs. Ohio is one of the states that's been hardest hit by the opioid epidemic. A nonprofit organization across from the police station aims to help. Josh Lytle started using drugs at age 12 and was an addict for 12 years. Now he's trying to help others get clean. He says faith is key. Basically what they'll do is they can call me. First responders can call us and, and we can just go in that moment of crisis and begin to share that there's hope. And then once they get that message of hope, once they believe that, then we start to work with them and start to help deal with all these issues in, in their life. I call them scar issues, but it's really just pains and hurts from growing up and dis-ease with themselves. Yeah, for sure. You know Eric Martin? Randy has been clean for about a year and a half now. She started taking painkillers as a teenager after suffering a broken leg. At some point, she found she couldn't do without them. That's the start of many addictions. Sometimes when you think you hit bottom, you really didn't, and there's something else, and you fall all the way down, and you say, okay, this is bottom, it's, it's time. Like, almost losing my kids completely, my family didn't trust me. I couldn't go to my family's house. It was a hard thing to do. I just had to stop and you gotta surround your, you gotta get away from those bad people that are still in it and that still want you to get high with them. You gotta, you can still be their friends, but you keep them at a distance. Another one. An emergency call comes in. Someone's overdosed. Officer Kevin Thompson makes his way to the scene. Not exactly sure what she took. She said, claiming she didn't take anything. <coughs> Chad had take? a bottle. He's the gentleman said that it was completely full. The bitch tried to kill my fucking granddaughter. You want to know why I'm doing this? Because my daughter's being thrown out instead of her. That's why all this is happening. I wasn't nowhere around you. I was in the woods. We need to get you down to the ambulance, okay? Many in this area feel like they're on the losing side of life. There are few jobs and few prospects. We have an officer that's stationed up here. Um, we take turns coming up. I worked here last night for four hours, and we, uh, we definitely interact with the kids and the families and try to um, you know, make a positive impact on these kids and stuff like that so that they like us and we're not seen as the enemy. We're, we're uh, somebody that they can look up to and trust. But yeah, we know most of the families that live here. What's needed is more help for addicts and tougher handling of dealers. The police say they're doing what they can to prevent incidents like this from happening again. This image was seen around the world. Kevin Thompson was on hand when the photo was taken here on a major thoroughfare. A school bus was close by at the time. You, you put a face to this, to the problem that we're, we're dealing with on, a, on a, a daily basis at the time, where it's real easy to pick up the newspaper and you read something like that and then lick your fingers and go to the next page, where now you've got a picture, a face to put to it, and, and that's kind of what they were looking for was... To, to get some resources, to get some help, because it, it's not just a law enforcement issue. What we've found, you can't do it alone. 
The next morning, Jacob Talbot is back on duty. He tells us that ever since the police department and the community stepped up their efforts to combat the drug epidemic, there have been fewer overdoses and fewer dealers. Now we've kind of, we've chased the bigger ones out that, you know, they're more in hiding than before, where now a lot of the bigger ones all migrated down into Wellsville. But Wellsville is just a few kilometers from East Liverpool. And Talbot admits there are still plenty of users in the area. Rob, I'm on Virginia. Which vehicle is it? That one you recognize, the uh, Jeep Patriot. 10 4. The officers are on the lookout for a certain vehicle. A3. Talbot spots the car and pulls it over. Good. There's a warrant out for the owner's arrest. This time, the issue has nothing to do with drugs. It's about unpaid alimony. He got a warrant. Bro, I got to so. get my hands behind my back and everything. Yeah. Like, I ain't even, this ain't. That's just apartment protocol, man, not mine. Talbot would like to see his hometown prosper again. He'd like to see the jobs return and the drug crisis beaten. He says they're doing everything they can to make that happen. I'll be going this one, brother.